Greetings Exiles! In today's video we have for you the best Forbidden Right belt to be ever released on this channel. Unlike its predecessor, this one is a lot tankier. It utilizes the interaction between stuff like the Zolution of the Flesh Unique Jewel, Petrified Blood, and Divine Flesh in what I like to call Void Mage. Just take a look. We can tank a full barrage of Shaber Balls which is one of the highest damaging boss moves to tank in this game. Best of all, we did not lose damage compared to the previous version of this build but rather, we went up by 50% higher reaching 30 million damage at optimal conditions. Just keep in mind that damage is not fully realized in this video, mostly due to Forbidden Right ridiculously high mana requirement. But anyway, sit back and relax as this build guide is just about to start. So first of all, we are still an occultist, mostly due to the ascendancy bonuses to area of effect, damage, and the chaos explosions, which causes self-cast Forbidden Right to be a true beast of a clearing build. First of all, we start with Void Beacon. This node is a simple minus 20% to all nearby enemies' chaos and cold resistance. It also deletes their life regeneration, which is useful if Maven is witnessing the fight. Next, we have Withering Presence. This node increases our total chaos damage by 15% and it helps us capping it by giving us additional 60% resistance to it. Remember that Forbidden Right inflicts chaos damage to you whenever you cast it. Thus do not attempt using this build until you achieve the highest possible chaos resistance you can get. Finally, this node inflicts Wither debuff on nearby enemies once every second. Each stack will increase the chaos damage they take by 6%, up to 100% at 15 stacks. From here we take Profane Bloom. This node is the only reason why self-casting Forbidden Right is viable. A single explosion will start a chain reaction that will clear the entire screen. Last but not least we have Forbidden Power. As you guys can see, we have over 11 power charges in this build. Thus it only makes sense to take this node as it gives us increased damage and area of effect per power charge we have, plus increasing our total power charges by 1. And yeah, that was it for our ascendancy. Next for our passive tree, we have one that focuses on every single power charge node available for us to take. We also have spell crit nodes, power charge scaling nodes, and finally, lots of life and area of effect. Now once you are high level enough, consider investing into two large cluster jewel setups. These add some powerful chaos notables like Unholy Grace and Touch of Cruelty, or really any other strong chaos notable. Next we branch off into three identical small cluster jewels. Each and every one of them adds the following notable. Born of Chaos. This one gives us 3% additional maximum chaos resistance. Again, this is important since Forbidden Right inflicts chaos damage to us every time we cast it. Thus it's important to minimize its damage as much as possible. Next we are going to talk about items. Starting with our weapon. We are dual wielding two void batteries. When you are stacking power charges, this one becomes best in slot option in terms of damage to investment ratio. You can possibly use mirror tier ones with plus 2 gems and high spell damage rolls but you will end up wasting so much currency for little difference. But anyway, our next item is Feral's Fur. This chest grants us our maximum number of power and frenzy charges whenever we are running aspect of the cat. It also gives us a decent amount of life and it's not too expensive. Now how can we take full advantage of this item alongside all of our power charges? Simple, we use Badge of the Brotherhood unique amulet. This one sets our maximum frenzy charges to be equal to our maximum power charges. Each frenzy charge gives us 4% more damage and cast speed. Thus, with our 11 power charges we end up getting like 60% more damage from the frenzy charges we generate from this amulet. Make sure to anoint Golem's blood on your amulet for that extra defensive boost. Our next item is a rare helm with lots of life, plus 1 to maximum power charges, a good resistance roll, and 20% to global critical strike multiplier if possible. The best way to craft something like this is to get a double influence space and spam chaos orbs on it until you get plus 1 to maximum power charges alongside a decent amount of life. After that you just craft the suffixes separately by locking the prefixes and reforging them with reforge crit harvest craft. Our next item is a precursor emblem with plus 1 to maximum power charges. You just need to get one of these as they are somewhat expensive. The rest of the mods doesn't really matter, you just need plus 1 charges and that's about it. Our second ring is a rare one with a decent life roll, attributes as you will still need to get them somewhere, resistances, and crafted mana recoup upon taking damage as that will refill your mana while casting forbidden right. Our next item is a rare belt with lots of life and resistances if possible. 
pretty straightforward. Next for our gloves, we got a pretty powerful caster gloves that has life, cast speed, 10% chance to unnerve enemies on hit, which increases the spell damage they take by 10%, and aspect of the cat, which we added deterministically using beastcraft. Last but not least, we have a pair of boots with life, high movement speed roll, and tailwind. These are your mandatory modifiers. From here you can upgrade by having onslaught, elusive, and maybe some resistances if you still need them. It all depends on how much currency you are willing to spend on this slot. Although, it's always cheaper to just craft your own boots like me. But now with items out of the way, let's talk about gems that goes inside of them. For our main 6 link we have, Forbidden Right, Awakened Added Chaos Damage Support, Awakened Void Manipulation, a Greater Volley Support, Power Charge on Crit, and Intensify. You could possibly use Awakened Greater Multiple Projectile Support in a state of Greater Volley for slightly more damage, although it will be expensive. Our next gem setup is a 4 link reservation setup. It starts with Petrified Blood, Despair, Blasphemy Support, and Level 4 Enlighten. Our next gem setup contains lesser auras like Level 20 Clarity, Level 20 Vitality, Level 1 Precision, and Level 3 Enlighten. Next we have a 3 link totem support setup, starting with Wither, Spell Totem, and Multiple Totem Support. Yes, you can possibly inflict all 15 stacks of Wither yourself, but that will take a while. Thus we are using this setup to build up all 15 stacks in less than 2 seconds. Last but not least, we got another 3 link setup. This one contains Dash, Second Wind Support, and Arcane Surge. And yeah, that was it for our gems. Next for jewels, for our Watcher's Eye, we have 30% increased critical strike multiplier while affected by precision. And that's pretty much it. No need to sink in like 50x on Watcher's Eye this time. Next we have a glorious vanity timeless jewel that mentions Xibiqua specifically. Place it in this specific socket to convert nearby keystone into divine flesh. Divine flesh is arguably one of the most powerful timeless keystones in the entire game. It increases our maximum chaos resistance by 5 and makes it so that half of all elemental damage we take is taken as chaos damage instead thus being more useful the higher our maximum chaos resistance is, and our chaos resistance is capped at 90%. Our last unique jewel here is Dissolution of the Flesh. This one increases our total life pool by 30%. It also makes it so that anytime we take damage, we reserve life instead of taking it as damage for 2 seconds. This makes concepts like regen irrelevant. The drawback is that you have to stop taking damage for 2 seconds to recover that reserved life. Now this works perfectly fine for us since we are using Petrified Blood, which forces 40% of all damage we take to be taken as damage over time instead. This basically splits the damage between our maximum and current life, effectively doubling our overall hit pool. Just remember that the mere action of casting Forbidden Right will reserve some of your life as well, so make sure to stop casting it for 2 seconds every now and then to recover your reserved life. Any remaining jewel socket we have left should be filled with a normal rare jewel like this one, we are looking for life, crit multi, and increased projectile or area damage, doesn't really matter. Feel free to get resistances on your jewel if you still need them. Next for bandit's quest, we are going to help Alira as usual. As for pantheons, we take the soul of the Blind King for its freeze immunity, and the soul of Abareth for shorter ignites on us. And that was it for our strongest self cast forbidden right build for this league. If you guys have enjoyed this video, then make sure to like and maybe even subscribe so you don't miss out on any future build guides like this one. My name is Phoenix and I will see you all in the next video.